oftentimes, uh, musicians will find that their bridge is pulling excessively, or what appears to be excessively forward. Um, a lot of this can be avoided by putting the uh, the pencil lead. It's, it's not actually lead anymore, but I'm, I'm, I don't remember the actual graphite. Excuse me. Thank you, Shar. She's off on the side. Um, graphite and it helps the string slide along and that'll help keep the bridge straighter also. Um, so in this particular section, we're going to go over, we've got a string that appears to be pulling and we're going to add some graphite post facto to changing the string and try and make things a little bit more comfortable for the string. So here, there isn't any change in how we're, going, how we're doing that as to how we show it for the new string. Um, but if we're doing it when the string is already on the instrument, it's a little bit different. What we're going to do is loosen the string a little bit. And here I'm going to anchor my fingers on the bridge. I'm going to lift the string slightly out of place, but don't let it fall on the, I mean, if you let go, it'll fall and land on the instrument. Here, there's nowhere for it to go except into my hand. But you want to have your hand anchored on the bridge and feel comfortable that you've got the string under control. Uh, you also want to make sure that your hands aren't greasy. When you're going to do this, it's probably best to wash your hands beforehand so you don't get oil from your hands on the strings. It just adds to problems with rosin and tone production. So I've got the string on a place and proceed as we did before and then put the string back in the notch bring it back up to pitch and if we need to we'll stretch the string a little bit and at this point go back through a previous video where we talked about how to align the pegs because it's going to be very difficult to tune the instrument at this point. Uh, for aligning the pegs, I usually tell people you're wasting your time short of a day for dominance. Wait a day, wait two days, at which point you can get your pegs aligned and they'll stay that way for the next several months and you shouldn't have to do anything with them. Um, also, review another video that we did that had to do with checking the alignment of your bridge and aligning it as necessary. Because when you change strings, invariably, with all the additional tuning, it's going to pull the top of the bridge toward the fingerboard. And you want to keep an eye on that uh, over the first few days after you change the strings. Bridges in spite of what a shop may or may not tell you, there's really no reason for a bridge to not last indefinitely, in my opinion. As long as you keep the bridge straight and place the load comfortably on the top of the bridge, it should be able to hold that forever. If you arch, meaning let the bridge pull over a little bit and put the weight, it will bend and you'll end up with a bridge that's warped. Bridges can be straightened, but they'll, they're very, very prone to re-warping very quickly. So if you can avoid that, you're way ahead. I'm sure there are some people saying, but the string slots are going, the string's gonna wear slots really deep and that's a problem. If it's an important bridge, if it's a bridge that a musician really likes and wants to keep, it's not a big deal for a shop without even removing the bridge from the instrument, take the string out, cut a V-notch, graft a small piece of the same kind of wood into place as the bridge, and a, something like this is usually happening on the E string, at which point uh, a parchment is placed over to protect the wood and it covers up the repair. It's invisible and it gives the bridge another 25 years of life.